In this lesson, my friends, we'll be looking at question 3b, a typical trigonometry and geometry question on the May 2012 paper. Here it states in part b, the diagram below not drawn to scale shows the journey of a ship which started at port P, sailed 15 kilometers due south to port Q, and then a further 20 kilometers due west to port R. Now here they, they have given us a diagram and here they, are, they have given us a compass here to the right to assist us in answering the question. So here is part one. Let's get into it. Uh, they're asking us in part one to copy the diagram and label it to show the points Q and R and the distance 20 kilometers and 15 kilometers. And that's an easy two marks. Now quickly what I'm, what I'm simply going to do is to just copy this diagram. Okay, so let me just take a shot of that quickly. Uh, copy, where is that? Copy, and let's paste it now, my friends. Paste, all right? So here we have a diagram, and this is part one. So let me just let me just make a note of that quickly before I even move any further. Now, this is part one I'm answering, okay? Now, my friends, uh, if you notice, they gave us a compass here, all right? So what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to put in my cardinal points just to assist you in answering the questions. We have a north up there, so I would have a south. And to my right, I would have the east and to my left is the west. Okay, so that's it. Now, they said that the ship, okay, sailed a ship which started at Port P. So obviously Port P here, that's my starting point, sailed 15 kilometers due south to Port Q. So south, if you notice, if I'm at P and I'm going south, I would have to go straight down. Uh, and if you look at the compass, you'll see that, okay? So it went st straight down to a port south to a port Q. So obviously this point there would be my port Q. And it would have moved a distance of 15 kilometers. So let's just put in that measurement. 15 kilometers okay so the distance from p to q is 15 this distance there all right now they said that it it and then a further 20 kilometers due west to a port r so if you notice it, this is my point q where i'm at now and i'm going to the left and if you notice on the compass to the left is west okay so here i would have my 20 kilometers 20 kilometers from q to a port R out there. So let's just let's just write in that point there, R, okay? So there we have it, my friends. They have asked us to copy the diagram and label it to show the points Q and R and the distance 20 kilometers and 15 kilometers. And that's it, an easy two marks. Now let's quickly move on to part two. They're saying here that PR, the shortest distance of the ship, okay, from the port where the journey started so we're asked to calculate that distance now pr now um i can just do a quick thing here just to give you an idea pr from p up here where the ship started to r where it has stopped okay so if i should just connect these this this point dear my friends just connect that that's the distance that this is the distance that they want us to calculate. Now, if you notice quickly, this is a right angle triangle I have here, and I have two sides of my right angle triangle. So obviously I can use Pythagoras theorem to solve for the side that is missing. So we know that in a, in a right angle triangle, the side that is across or opposite from the right angle is called the hypotenuse. So I'm just going to simply call that H. Let me just get a better color to emphasize that. I'm going to call that H for hypotenuse. So as Pythagoras theorem states that H, this is part two we're calculating, H square must be equal to A square plus B square. Okay. Now we don't know what the hypotenuse is. That's what we're trying to find. So let's just substitute the, the length of the hypotenuse is P to R. Okay. So I can say P R squared squared must be equal to the distance that they gave us which is pq squared okay I'm, and i'm just simply substituting values okay pq squared plus my qr squared okay plus qr squared all right so this is the general form let's just substitute we have a pr squared must be equal to pq squared 
P to Q is 15, so I have a 15 squared there, and that is being added to 20 squared. Okay, my friends? Now, we can just simply calculate this. We know that 15 squared is 225, and 20 squared is 400. So we're taking the sum of 225 and 400, which will be 625. But I can simply show you how you can go ahead to calculate that on your calculator if you're not sure about it. So let me just pull up the calculator a bit to show you what is really happening. What I'm taking is 15 squared. So 15 squared is the same as 15 multiplying itself two times. So that's 15 times 15, which is equal to 225. And then I'm going to do the same thing. So just bear in mind that 15 squared is 225. And I'm going to do the same thing for 20 times 20. Okay, and that is equal to 400. So here we have, guys, here we have PR squared must be equal to 225 plus 6, my, my bad, I'm moving ahead of myself, plus 400. Okay, now PR squared must be equal to and this obviously will give us um 200 plus 225 plus 400 that's 625 and if you notice uh pr is squared so we need to do the opposite because we need to find what pr is okay so i'm going to do the opposite of square which is to take the square root of both sides okay so the square root of pr squared is pr is equal to and the square root of 625 is 25 okay good however my friends if you're not sure I could just simply show you again how you calculate that because maybe some persons are not sure as to how to find the square root of a number okay so in taking out the calculator let's say you had 625 you'd plug that in and we're taking the square root of that so I'm taking the square root of that, and as you see clearly here, that's 25, okay? So let's just get rid of that. And our units are very important. This is 25 kilometers, okay? So we have the distance there, so that's another easy two marks. Uh, now in part three, they're asking us to calculate the measure of angle Q, P, R, given your answer, to the nearest degree okay and that's three marks now let, let's just pull this up a bit so we can have a little bit more space to work with okay i think this is going to take up a little bit more space i think that should be good enough let's just move this over a bit. now guys in part three they're asking us to calculate the measure of the angle qpr now let's identify that angle now remember that the letter that is in the middle that's where the angle is being formed so the p that's where the angle is being formed so i'm going to position myself at the point p and let's just quickly change the color and i'm going to mark that okay so the point p here this is where the angle is being formed and i'm just going to simply give that a name i'm going to call it theta so i'm finding the angle theta okay my friends now as i've said always position yourself so i'm just going to draw a little man there just to assist you in answering the question now basically what you have here you have a right angle triangle so obviously we can use the trig ratios to solve for the missing angle all right now if i'm positioned at the angle theta i am going to ask myself the side rq that was given the 20 uh, kilometers okay let me write it in 20 kilometers that was given that's the opposite side to me okay and so I'm going to simply say that since that's the opposite side and I have found the hypotenuse uh, which we had established earlier and the hypotenuse worked out to be 25 this side here h 25 kilometers okay then I have the opposite and the hypotenuse so that is simply the sine ratio I could use to solve for that angle okay so I could simply say the sine sine of theta must be equal to the opposite opposite over the hypotenuse okay now simply guys I don't know what theta is so I'm going to simply say the sine of theta must be equal to what's the opposite the opposite is the is the side that is across from the angle theta that I've marked which is 20 kilometers so my opposite is 20 and my hypotenuse which I've found is 25 
so I'm just going to put that over 25. Now simply my friends, we can simplify this. Uh, 5 into itself goes, well 5 into 25 rather goes 5 times and 5 into 20 goes 4 times. Okay, so I can simply say the sine of theta, sine of theta is equal to 4 upon 5. 4 upon 5 okay and we could we could work with a decimal to make it a bit more easier for you all right let's just convert that to a decimal you could simply say 4 divided by 5 4 divided by 5 is equal to 0 0.8 all right and we could just work with that to make life a bit easier for you so you could say the sine of theta is equal to 0 0.8 now what you really want to do you want to find theta and if you notice sine is is multiplying theta so you need to move the sine and bring it across so we're going to divide through by sine okay guys so let's divide through by sine what you do to one side you have to do it to the other side so sine will cancel sine therefore we have theta must be equal to and if you notice when sine is down here in the denominator it is to the positive one and if you're not sure about what we're doing you could always check out our playlist on exponents or indices and look at the inverse rule okay uh, or when a uh, base rather is raised to a negative index okay you could always check out those rules and it will give you a, a better insight as to what is happening now back to the lesson if you notice sign here is raised to the positive one when it's down here so if i should take it up in the numerator and say sign i would now the power will become negative okay so it's sine inverse of 0 0.8 okay and let me just pull this over a bit maybe we need a little bit more space to work with okay no, guys, uh, here, basically, I'm just going to take out my calculator and we're going to find the inverse now of sine uh, 0 0.8. So here we have 0 .0 0 0.8 there. So I can, can simply say shift. I'm going to press the shift button. Where is this button? Let's just check. Okay, guys, here we have it. Now, since we need the inverse of z the sine inverse rather of 0 0.8 we are going to press this button on your calculator you would have to press the shift button on this calculator is a bit different so we're going to press the inverse and if you notice the buttons have changed so what i really need is uh this inverse of 0 0.0 0.8 rather 0 0.8 and I'm going to press this button now the sine inverse and that is 53 so theta theta is equal to 53.130.130 that's correct to 3dp however they had asked us specifically to the nearest degree and i'll just shift this over a bit so that we can uh, browse at the instruction if you notice in part three here they said here that um, they want us to calculate the measure of the angle given your answer to the nearest degree. So obviously the nearest degree would be 53 degree because uh, the digit that follows the point is a one that's less than five. So theta, theta, let me just change this quickly. Uh, theta is equal to 53 degrees and that's our answer.